Hey guys, it's Tom here. Welcome to another episode of 10 with Tom, uh, where we explore faith 10 minutes at a time. Today we're talking about the difference between believing and following. So a while back, I bought my boys uh, superhero outfits. Um, I can't remember what for, dress up or a party or something. And I remember looking on the package of like this Hulk outfit, or I think it was a Superman outfit, and it, oh, Superman, and it literally said on the packaging, this outfit does not enable you to fly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I thought about the fact that they actually, actually have to write that on the packaging is somewhat worrying, which made me think of a story, and this is a true story. When I was about six years old, um, I had a Superman outfit and I did believe I could fly and I remember, of course I did, yeah, I remember standing on the top of a jungle gym fully believing that I was going to fly and I remember my mom running towards me like, no, and I just went, whew. boom, stitches, still got the scar, uh, four stitches under my chin when I tried to fly off a jungle gym. So that is why they have the notification on the packaging for idiots like me. But, um, but I, I didn't just believe in Superman, I followed his example. <laughs> How's that for a segue? Okay. Because yeah. um, today I want to talk about the difference between believing and following. I wasn't just willing, I didn't just believe, I, I was willing to actually follow his example and try to do what he did. And that uh, was a bad thing in that case. But when it comes to following Jesus, I think there is a difference between believing and following. Jesus said this uh, to the people. He says, he said, it says, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, they already believed in him, but he says, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. If you follow me, then I'll know you are truly my disciples. And a disciple is literally someone who follows someone else. Um, don't just believe. He says, don't just believe in me. It says, even the demons say, even the demons believe in God, but it's about following Jesus. I want you to pick up your cross, says Jesus, and follow me. Um, I spoke about this a little bit on Sunday if you got, got the message, but I think one of the problems with modern day Christianity is that we have reduced Jesus from Lord and Savior to sort of friend and forgiver. And he is friend and forgiver, make no mistake about it, but he is also Messiah and Lord. And the, the Messiah, the word Messiah literally means king. And if Jesus is king, if he's Lord, that means that he is on the throne of our lives. And, uh, and that obviously ha is a challenge. Uh, and this is where it gets tough because, uh, like I said on Sunday, the thing about thrones is they don't stay empty for long. And if Jesus is not on the throne of your life or my life, if he's not our Lord, the Messiah, then the reality is someone else is on the throne. It may even be you or something else is on the throne. That can be money, status, power, whatever that is. Uh, as Andy Stanley recently said at a conference that I attended, he says, you can decide whether or not to follow Jesus, but you cannot decide what following Jesus looks like. Um, and that I found so deeply challenging for me, and I wanted to share it with you today because I think it's time for a shift. I think it's time for a shift for you. It's time for a shift for me. It's time for a shift for the church that, that Christianity would no longer be simply a reference point in our lives, but rather it would be the center point, the context by which we live our entire lives. And I think it's time for that shift to happen for us as followers of Christ, as Christians, to tether all of our lives, all of the application of our lives to the person of Jesus Christ, to the authority and the teaching of Jesus Christ. Now, what does that look like? What does following Jesus look like? Well, kind of obvious, it looks like Jesus. <laughs> If we're going to follow Jesus, then we only have to look at what Jesus did. I, I think we should bring back those brangles. Do you remember? What would what, the, what was it? W -W 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 there we go. All of you guys, check. WWJD. Except I'd like to change it to uh, HWJR. How would Jesus respond? Haha, -ha. because I think our responses, our reactions are often a better indication of, of whether we're following Jesus or whether we simply just believe in Jesus. You see, actions speak louder than words, but reactions speak even louder. They show us what's really in our heart, what we really think. Our actions tell part of the story, but our reactions tell the whole story. And unfortunately, um, 
Christians sometimes haven't always reacted or responded well. And I look at, back at the COVID crisis and some of the ways that some of my Christian friends or Christian leaders, church leaders were responding or reacting. It was kind of embarrassing. And the watching world is watching and they're expecting us to look like and act like Jesus. And that's totally fair for them to think that because we call ourselves Christians, followers of Jesus. And our culture, surprisingly, the secular culture is actually okay with Jesus. They like Jesus. They are just not that fond of Christians. And I get it because so often they, I think, have a hard time believing that we believe what we say we believe. Because, let's be honest, we don't always act like we believe what we say we believe. Um, And so I think, again, I think it's time for us to reclaim this idea that we are, in fact, not just Jesus believers. We are Jesus followers. And uh, I think when we do that, the watching world will see, and I think people would uh, would be far more open to receiving Christ, to following Christ when they see that. Um, so I get that's a high challenge message today. Um, I hope it's challenging for you. It's deeply challenging for me. Um, and so maybe the questions I want to leave you with today is, when others look at your life, would they say that you're a Jesus believer or would they say that you're a Jesus follower? I mean, that's an interesting question to consider. Do you just believe Or do you actually live out your life in a way that is evident to the people around you? Uh, Non-Christian, Christian, Christian, work colleagues, family, friends, that you are indeed seeking to follow the ways and the manner of Jesus. And then the second question is, what changes do you need to make, do I need to make in your journey of following Jesus? And maybe there's just one thing that God is kind of pointing out to you. You know, hey, that doesn't align with what you say you believe. And what, the, what, what needs to happen. Um, and again, I just want to end with this. This is not a try harder message. This is not a be better message. That's not how we follow Jesus by trying hard or using willpower. We follow Jesus by simply acknowledging that he is in fact Lord. That he is in fact on the throne. Not I. He is on the throne. And then we submit to that. And then we allow him by his spirit to empower us to follow him. Because that's how the Christian life works. We don't do it on our own. We do it in His strength. He gives us the will and desire. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Giving you the desire and the power to follow Him. So let's be Jesus followers.